we're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's February 28th here in Seoul. I'm Sinyun, and you're watching News Generation. Joining me in the studio is Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. And Im sang -yuk. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, let's start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. Ever since China reopened its borders following the pandemic, the number of overseas tourists has soared, especially from South Korea. China Media Group reported in January that the number of tourists visiting China from Seoul exceeded 140,000. This was up by 908 percent on year. The island province of Hainan particularly attracted much attention after it recently passed a visa-free entry policy. And the number of subscribers to South Korea's prominent university student online community, dubbed EveryTime, has surpassed 7 million as of Monday. EveryTime was launched in 2011. It's an online community app for university students to share information about their classes, job application process, and campus life. It was initially set out for students to easily create a timetable that helps them plan their courses and schedules. A total of 397 schools use this service. Moving on, on to France. The French Olympic Committee on Monday said it would provide hotel rooms for breastfeeding athletes during the Paris Olympics, as children are not allowed to enter athletes' villages. This is a groundbreaking measure that marries the tough choice many sportswomen have to go through. That's choosing between their careers and parenting. In the past, French judo star Clarisse Agbenu demanded that the sports industry be more considerate towards female athletes with children. Currently, children can be given passes to enter athletes' villages under exceptional circumstances, but they are very restricted. That is why instead sportswomen will be offered rooms at a nearby hotel to the athlete's village where they can sleep with their infant or have their other parent look after them. And the total cost of around $43,000 will be entirely funded by the Paris Olympic Committee. And this year's summer games are set to kick off from July 26 and last until August 11th. Around 10,000 athletes are expected to sleep at the athlete's village. Now here at the studio, what do you guys think about the French Olympic Committee's latest groundbreaking decision? Well, I feel glad that the Olympic Committee finally decided to to uh, provide considerate services to the female players with children. So I think this decision is good for both uh, the players and the children. So the mothers who are participating in the Olympic Games uh, can feel reassured because they can stay with their families and her children. So also children of these players can receive the care they need and feel the comfort. So both the players and children will gain positive energy mm -hmm. in the end. So it will contribute a lot to the performance of the female players as well. And since they can get the uh, support from their families, so it will all, all in all be good and provide positive energy. So this also coincides with the Olympic spirit, I think. Um, mm -hmm. That is uh, what matters is not to win, but to take part in. So whether you're old or young, you have the right to enjoy this global event. So I think here the players' children can also be considered the participant of the sports event because they are the one who actually gives positive vibe to the mothers. So it will be good for exactly. all of them. <laughs> it's the message of the Olympics, inclusivity and also harmonizing with everyone. Now, what about you, Walter? What do you think? About oh, this? I couldn't have said it better myself. I think this is a positive move for the French Olympic Committee and in most cases, Cases, uh, or in many cases, women are the ones who have to give up their career. This is including athletes. Mm -hmm. So now this gives them a chance to not only pursue their dreams as uh, like professional athletes and go to the Olympics, but also spend time with their family, which I'm sure they struggled with before in the past where they weren't able to see their children or see their uh, partners. However, I think this couldn't be, a, couldn't be more of a better move for the Olympic Committee. Uh, the, you know, athletes go under such stressful circumstances and as for women, if they miss their children, I think this will only improve their performances rather than hinder it. Exactly. And following the committee's announcement, a lot of female or sportswomen have been lauding their, their decision. And it's not only for the co uh, category of sports. We're seeing more movements that ensure the better rights of working women so that they no longer have to have the tough choice of choosing between their career and nurturing a child. Instead, they can find a nice balance. Now, we're going to turn to our main discussion topic of the day now. Take a listen to what my AI voice secretary has to say. Public baths. Until the 70s and 80s, many Korean households didn't have enough space to take a shower at home. 
That's why they had to go to public baths. It was custom to go to a public bath once a month or on the day before a special day, such as the first day of school or Chuseok, one of the nation's biggest holidays. Though showering and bathing at home became the norm, along with South Korea's rapid economic growth, public bath culture stuck around. In the early 2000s, the number of public baths peaked. People went there to enjoy the sauna, snacks and even massages. But once the pandemic hit, public baths started to go out of business. Since their peak 20 years ago, the number of public baths has fallen by 40%. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, public baths have been considered a hotbed of the virus. We've actually seen major infection cases start here, and this has contributed to the drop in the number of public baths here in Korea, though it's been a long tradition to go there with your loved ones before important events. And before we look into this, I'd like to ask our panelists if they've ever been to a public bath, and if so, if you cherish any special memories. Uh, yes, so ob obviously before the pandemic, pre-pandemic, I used to go quite often in my early 20s. Now, I really enjoyed the bathhouses at that time, though for the first time around when I uh, first came to Korea, I lived in Australia for so long, it was quite shocking to see how comfortable certain Koreans were with nudity. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, when come, Australia is still, still quite conservative when it comes to nudity, but the second time I fit right in, I realized that everyone was just fine walking around in the nutty, but I haven't been for many, many years uh, just because of obviously the pandemic and it was quite uh, you know, uh, uh, now I feel like it's sort of a dirty place for me personally. Other people don't feel that way. And I know that they do keep that their, um, their bathhouse is very clean. Uh, I'm not a clean freak, as we explained on the show. But when I think about sharing a bath with people, um, yeah, it's, I get kind of put off by it. Exactly. And the <laughs> pandemic really exacerbated that perception because cluster infections really spurred in many public bathhouses, which put them out of business. But sang you know, given the fact that you've lived in Korea for a long time. Any special memories you have at public bathhouses? Well, when I was young, I used to go to public bath facilities with my dad and my brother. But after I turned 18, uh, I never kind of visited this really? kind of place. So the bottom line is that I didn't actually enjoy this place mm -hmm. as much, uh, even when I was young. And I think the biggest reason would be like Walter said, uh, it was really awkward for me <laughs> to see everyone going around naked. I don't know why, but my inner self told me that this isn't just right. So, and the worst part about the public bath was that I got easily feel dizzy uh, when I stayed too long in the hot bathtub. And I couldn't really understand why all the grown-ups were so obsessed with the steam. Uh, rooms where you can relax your tired bones. Uh, it actually suffocated me. Mm -hmm. The air was too hot and heavy. But I do have uh, like one special memory about the bathhouse and that is the banana milk that you yeah. can have after you take a bath and they sell it in the snack bars. Mm -hmm. And it really gives you a f refreshment after taking a hot bath. And also I really enjoyed going into the cold water tub mm -hmm. after I took bath in the hot, hot bath tubs. And it was kind of addictive. I right. really enjoyed mm -hmm. going to and from the cold water tub to the hot bath hot water tub, vice versa. Mm -hmm. It was really memorable. Hot and cold, yeah, hot and right. cold. And I think a lot of Koreans who were raised and who lived here for a long time can empathize with this statement. But a lot of people think public baths are really a nostalgic memory, especially the older generation. Because for my dad, he doesn't have any daughters, but his lifelong dream was to go with his son, which he didn't have eventually, <laughs> so he had to go alone. But it's sort of tradition in Korea to take your children to these public baths and do something called demiri, which is exfoliating dead skin cells off of your body and then just enjoying the steam and really hot spas with your loved ones. But now our generation isn't visiting these public bathhouses anymore. So I would now like to focus on how our generation views public bathhouses compared to our parents or grandparents. Well, it seems that MZers are split down the middle when it comes to going to these public bathhouses. According to some, as I mentioned earlier, nudity is a factor that some don't want to that for some reasons that they don't want to go to the bathhouse. If you haven't been, it would be, uh, if you're a tourist and you haven't been, it would be a culture shock for some to see how comfortable some are walking around in the, the nutty. Uh, I, <laughs> I read a recent article though, this is a serious problem, uh, that uh, 
people had problems with safety and the power of uh, social activism as well. Now, there was a recent case, this is as early as uh, this week, I think, of a man in his 20s secretly filming inside the female dress room. Mm -hmm. Now, the person that the male was filming actually happened to be a, a quite well-known YouTuber, which he later made content about, and this really sparked a lot of debate online. Uh, this, got, this garnered millions and millions of views. So this content comes back to digital sex crimes, uh, as some of these peeping toms upload the videos online, which has caused a lot of movements to ask for stricter penalties or harsher penalties for people who take these videos. Now, at the moment, you can receive up to seven years prison time or up to 37,500 US dollars of fines. However, despite the negativity, there are some MZers, including myself, in my younger days, who saw this place as a place to meet your partner. Mm. Uh, depending on the bathhouses, there are a lot of activities that you can do together, like go to the ice rooms, hot rooms, eat some good food, and just play games. Mm -hmm. Or drink banana milk like Sangyeop, <laughs> as you yeah, did as a kid. It's delicious. Yeah, why don't you add on Sangyeop then to how our generation mm. views public bathhouses? Yes, yeah, so I do agree that the public bath facilities have mm. gained negative fame uh, these days, and like Walter said, in the beginning, I think the hygiene issue is the biggest concern for many young people. And we have seen during the COVID season that a lot of news broadcasting that viruses spread quickly, especially in gyms and these kind of public uh, spas. But what caught my attention was that these days, many foreign uh, tourists coming into Korea are really uh, uh, showing great interest mm -hmm. towards these public bath facilities because actually these public baths provide uh, various activities that you can do, not only just uh, taking bath, but also a lot of activities that you can enjoy with your families and partners. And also, I think the K-dramas uh, have actually mm -hmm. backed up this uh, hot popularity among the foreign tourists. Uh, TV shows like Crash Landing on You or The King of the Land uh, have portrayed uh, attractive images and scenes regarding public bathhouses in Korea. So if you're going to Instagram and search with the hashtag Jimjilbang uh, in English, then you can see a lot of posts uploaded by foreigners uh, and they were enjoying uh, the public bathhouses in Korea. Exactly. So though public baths might not be as popular compared to the 70s and 80s when they really spurred in the nation, we are seeing much development as you can see through the video on the screen. We're seeing a lot of infrastructure, different options that you can enjoy whilst you're there. And that has spurred a lot of popularity abroad as well. A lot of foreign media shed light as to how luxurious public baths are becoming in Korea, which is one of the reasons why I personally still love going to it, even though, of course, as you both mentioned, there are hygiene issues or virus hotbed mm -hmm. issues that I am concerned about. I do love the fact that once you go to these public baths in Korea nowadays, you can enjoy so many different entertainment options. You can watch a movie whilst in a very hot, steamy sauna and eat really nice eggs <laughs> and a lot of good drinks. It's all about the food. Mm -hmm. And I would like for you guys to then tell me how then our generation lead this new type of public bath culture and what are some things we can enjoy there? So as we know, some of the businesses are going out of business mm. just because, it, we, as we mentioned earlier, all the hygiene issues, etc. So the new bath culture has been more of a solo thing to do now at home. Mm -hmm. So since COVID-19, MZers have looked at other ways to scrub down or, you know, start to exfoliate their skin. Uh, this involves like going to places like Lush, mm -hmm. where everything, they have bath bombs, they have things for your skin, uh, it has every smell in the world in the store. <laughs> YouTubers all have also created content to help other people enjoy but the bath has experience in the comfort of their own home and bathroom. So rather than going to a public bath to mm. enjoy that really cleansing feeling, they yeah. would just do it at home. Yeah, exactly. But there are still some millennials and Gen Z like myself that go to these public baths. So tell us what we can enjoy there. So I think it's either one of the two. So like Walter said, there are some people these days who enjoy these public baths privately in their homes. And there are also others who go to luxurious spa brands that are uh, operated by big firms and department stores. And I think the most representative case in point would be the spa land located in Busan. So mm. if you go to one of these luxurious spas, uh, you can do various activities other than taking bath and they have a very nice and fancy facilities. There are a wide variety of tubs uh, from the tub that you can only 
dip your feet okay. and also uh, various types of steam rooms that range from 10 degrees Celsius to up to like 40 degrees right. Celsius. And also, as you mentioned, you can enjoy a lot of snacks here like grilled eggs. Uh, also, shikke, which is a traditional uh, Korean beverage made out of rice. Mm. And also, uh, these uh, places have become popular for a dating spot for the couples. And I don't know why, but all these people are like as a tradition, they fold the uh, bath towels and make it into a shape of a ship. Yeah. <laughs> so I look, it looks cute, it looks cute. Exactly. So, yeah, so I think uh, nowadays these uh, public baths have uh, tried to go for the uh, marketing strategy mm -hmm. to rebrand themselves into a more luxurious level that can actually uh, lure more uh, people to come and enjoy the public baths for their holiday. Exactly, you put it really well. Up till a few years back, we would perceive these public baths just as a place for you to wash yourself. But nowadays, it's another option of entertainment. Now, we asked our viewers if they have public baths in their own respective countries. If so, what their experience was like. Take a look at the screen to find out what three of our viewers had to share with us. Let's start with Benny. Benny said, in the Philippines, we normally take a bath three times when the summer season comes along. However, the culture here is sometimes in the provinces, they take a bath in the fall and so on. Leon said, due to Singapore's hot and humid climate, showering is the most common form of bathing for both locals and residents. Showers are widely available at workplaces and public spaces like gyms and community centers. However, public bathhouses aren't as common. Tira Spell says most people go to saunas to tan. However, public bathhouses are not popular in the U.S. So we can tell that public bathhouses are much more prevalent here in Korea than abroad, which is why a lot of international tourists or foreigners are quite curious as to what public bathhouses in Korea looks like. That's why we're going to include a fellow millennial from abroad in our talks who's experienced public bathhouses. So stay tuned for what he has to say on Korea's unique public bath culture. We're now going to turn to a fellow Gen Z, it's Justin Lovett, who is currently working as a photographer and YouTuber here in South Korea. Welcome, Justin. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So, Justin, how long have you lived in Korea? And during your stay, when did you go to a public bathhouse? I've been in Korea now almost four and a half years. And the first time I went, or since I've been here, I meant mainly to shoot that YouTube video that we put online. I was there with my wife, obviously not in the same room, but yeah. <laughs> I see. So you went there to film a YouTube video. Was it also because you were quite curious as to what a public bathhouse in Korea looked like? Yeah, it was. that was the main part. And visually, it was very interesting. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. Obviously, in America, as people had already said, there's no bathhouses like this, yeah. especially that you go to with other people. What did you like about it most, actually? Was there something that really intrigued you or there was something that surprised you, at least? Yeah, the definitely the water and those bathtubs, uh, the hot water, the cold water, those are awesome to be able to go into back and forth. But I think the biggest thing is the fact that you're with strangers naked <laughs> taking baths. That's probably <laughs> the most interesting thing. Okay, Justin, so how are public baths in Korea different from spas abroad? Any tips or heads up you'd like to give foreigners who might want to visit during their stay here in Korea? Yeah, I think the main difference is, you know, the jimjilbang that you can go afterwards and actually socialize with people because in a lot of other saunas or spas okay, that you go to, to you, uh, Shortly after this, you, you don't have a time to just socialize afterwards. So I think it's that time being able to just hang out with your friends and family. And the biggest tip would just to be is to have fun, have as much fun as you can while you're there. Right, Justin, and as you're speaking, we can see the video that you filmed is coming up on the screen. And I'm wondering, what did a lot of foreign viewers have to say based on looking, your, looking at your video? Yeah, they... They, no, I mean, this cloth that you have that you guys use to exfoliate skin, I think that was a really hot topic because in a lot of, in America at least, they don't have that. 
So, um, and the idea of getting dead skin off isn't as big of a, it's not as popular in the U.S. So I think a lot of people were intrigued by that and thought it was a great idea. Exactly, and I'm well aware that K-beauty and skincare products are really popular around the world, especially in the States. So maybe a lot of people could have a glimpse as to what public baths can do to make our skin look great. Thank you so much, Justin. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Yep, bye-bye. All right, and as a final note, I would like to ask you guys, would you guys like to see these public bathhouses come back back into style and boom more in business? I do. I think uh, that public bathhouses are really a big part of Korean culture, very much like how Japan has their hot spring baths as well. It would be a shame to see the businesses go out of business, but maybe the government can encourage tourists to come and try out their experience because I think it is a unique experience when coming to Korea. It is really relaxing. It is worthwhile trying to do on like a rainy day. You just got to bear in mind that you are, like uh, our visitor said, uh, you're sharing a bath with another person, which you may not be used to. But if you get over that sort of thing, you'll be all right. Personally, for me, it takes minutes because <laughs> as long as you're there, you'll just get accustomed to it. What yeah. about you, Sanyo? So whether you like it or not, I think these uh, public bath gives a special memory to we, the millennials and Gen Z. So when I was young, these public bath facilities were not only a place for uh, washing yourself, but it was also the place where the townspeople gather together mm -hmm. to have chats, small talks. It was a place for rendezvous. So I think we all have this keen memory with the public uh, bath facilities and it, it would be a shame to see uh, these facilities go disappear. So if they care more about the hygiene, then I believe that they will regain their fame once again since many uh, millennials and Gen Zs are interested in retro style these days. Mm -hmm. So I think they will have the chance to uh, get the popularity once again. And I think nowadays it's really important to preserve any bit of culture and tradition that we have in right. Korea because it works as a bridge between generations. It can be a great conversation starter or a chance for you to go through your parents or grandparents to just really enjoy and share memories at these common places. Now in the meantime, we'll be here every day from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Korea time, bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. And Im sang -yang. My pleasure as always. All right, and thank you ever for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.